Hello, my name is Sister Thea, and this is really not the kind of message I like to bring. I like to teach the Bible, but things have been happening on the, on the political front that every Christian, and especially every Christian leader, needs to know about. You need to be prepared. So right now, what I'm doing is sending the, spending this few minutes with you to send the warning, and it is indeed a warning. In Canada, our neighbor to the north, there have been strong moves to silence the church in speaking out on various issues. The main issue under target is that of homosexuality. There is something called the Alberta Human Rights Tribunal. And how this works is if someone feels offended, they can go and make a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Tribunal, and the tribunal will take the case, pay for it, and bring to court those who have committed such grave offenses as saying the Bible condemns homosexuality. Now I have an article here from World Net Daily that was posted on June the 9th. It'll give you an example and I want to spend a few minutes going over it. A Canadian human rights tribunal ordered a Christian pastor to renounce his faith and never again express moral opposition to homosexuality according to a new report. In a decision dated May 30th in the penalty phase of the quasi-judicial proceedings run by the Alberta Human Rights Tribunal, evangelical pastor Stephen Boyson was banned from expressing his biblical perspective of homosexuality and ordered to pay $5,000 for damages, for pain and suffering, as well as apologize to the activist who complained of being hurt. Now this is really something. Remember that this pastor was brought to the court having to defend himself or pay for his own defense while someone who felt offended got the support of the government and the financial support to bring suit. Now what was his grievous offense? Um, his grievous offense was that he wrote a letter to the editor of the Red Deer Alberta newspaper denouncing the advance of homosexual activism as wicked and stating that children as young as five or six years of age are being subjected to psychologically and physiologically damaging pro-homosexual literature and guidance in the public school system under the fraudulent guise of equal rights. You know, folks, that's going on right here in the United States. That was his grievous offense, to write a letter to the editor. Now, the fine, this is really something. The judge agreed that Boysen's letter was not a criminal act, and the government tribunal nevertheless ordered the Christian pastor to stop expressing his opinion. Censorship, censorship, censorship. He's not allowed to say what the Bible said. In essence, the Human Rights Tribunal is ordering the minister to renounce his Christian faith since his opposition to homosexuality is based upon the Judeo-Christian Bible. You know, there was no victim, uh, but the court was not stopped from ordering payment and the fact that he had to apologize. Now listen, this goes further, how he was restricted from expressing himself. Mr. Boyson and the Concerned Christian Coalition Incorporated shall cease publishing in newspapers, by email, on the radio, in public speeches, or on the internet in the future, disparaging remarks about gays and homosexuals. Uh, I mean, this is blatant censor censorship. Okay, furthermore, they were not to, um, it says further, all disparaging remarks versus homosexualities are directed to be removed from the current websites and the publications of Mr. Boysen and the Concerned Christian Coalition. Now, you may say, this is Canada. That'll never happen here in the United States. But I want to tell you, it's happening right here in the state of Colorado. The governor, Bill Ritter, has, ex has uh, fostered a bill that is just blatant censorship in the same way. This is, again, from another World Net Daily article, and this is what I want to scream. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. It's happening here. This is from June 12, 2008. A new law is helping homosexual activists achieve their goal of forcing Christians to teach biblical condemnation of homosexuality only behind the closed doors of their sanctuaries. They're saying you can teach it, just keep it in the church, don't bring it outside. 
Some opponents are calling this a bona fide censorship law, and top analysts for Focus on the Family, the Christian publishing and broadcasting powerhouse located in Colorado, by the way, are expressing concern for the mischief they expect to follow the signing of this bill by Governor Ritter. Now, this is a very interesting bill. The law provides an exemption allowing religious groups to continue teaching inside their doors, the Bible's condemnation of homosexuality. But the exemption itself is ultimately harmful to the church. And this is how you're restricted from expressing this biblical point of view outside the church. Let me go on. Religious publishers, he acknowledged, could be accused under the law for publishing biblical condemnation of homosexuality. Colorado Springs, where Focus is located, is also the home to the huge Christian publishing operations of NAV Press and the International Bible Society. There are those who simply, by publishing Christian materials, could find themselves charged with violations of this, of this statute. This statute also involves not having a designation on locker rooms or restrooms indicating uh, gender. Uh, this is really something. So uh, the law makes it illegal to deny a person to access to public restrooms and locker rooms based on gender identity or the perception of gender identity. So if you're in Colorado and you're having lunch with your 12-year-old daughter and she wants to use the restroom, you don't know whether she's going in there with any kind of pervert or any kind of uh, child molester uh, because there's no distinction that there's a ladies' room that she can go to. Uh, this is just the inmates are, are running the asylum, it seems. Okay, I want to look a little further at the expected impact of this war, of this law that's coming in. War is the right word. It is a war. Um, the warning is that there is a danger in those waters for any church that provides service to community. Remember, you can say what you want inside your four walls, but once you get outside, you can't. It is possible that this law's anti-discrimination demands could be triggered when outside groups come in to use the church meeting room, auditorium, or recreation facility. The targets of the complaints won't likely be churches themselves, but more likely church schools and programs that offer services to the communities and the like, critics of the law said. The intent of the homosexual activists who put this law in was to marginalize the church Keep it inside the sanctuary. Worse yet is that many small and medium-sized churches will have to go out of their way, including halting programs to avoid potential conflict because they don't have the resources to wage war over their beliefs. This is where we are right now. We're just burying our heads in the church because we don't want to have conflict. But brothers and sisters, what is happening is what because we don't stand up, because we don't say, no, this is censorship, we have freedom of religion, we have freedom of speech, what is happening is we are being closed inside the church. Now this censorship law isn't going to be enforced completely right away. It's an incremental enforcement. They do it little by little so that it's on the book so long and then pretty soon they'll say, you can't even say it inside the church. Okay, what do we do? We need to wake up. Instead of just spending our time building bigger buildings so that our church leadership has to worry about how we're going to pay the mortgage when, when giving is down, we need to stand up and take stock of what is going on. We need to support organizations that will take this law to court, will we'll stop it. What's it going to take for the church to wake up? I don't like giving messages like this, but church, wake up. Send this video to your pastors, to the leaders. The word has to get out. We need to be aware. God bless you, and I, I pray that God will have mercy on this country.